Hello all, welcome to this new lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned how to evaluate expressions in C language. And in this lesson, let us learn about type conversions. Okay, so let's get started. So what is type conversion? The process of converting a data of one data type to another data type is called as type conversion. Let me repeat, the process of converting a data of one data type to another data type is called as type conversion. And in C language, there are two kinds of type conversions. One is called as implicit type conversion. The other one is called as explicit type conversion. In implicit type conversion, the type conversion is automatically carried out by the compiler. Whereas in explicit type conversion, the type conversion has to be done by the programmer manually using a typecast operator. Okay, so I'll show you a few examples so that you'll understand the difference between implicit type conversion and explicit type conversion. Also, by seeing these examples, you will be in a position to understand how these concepts will actually work. Okay, so having said that, let's move on to see a few examples. Okay, now as you can see on the screen, I've given you a simple C program as an example to demonstrate implicit type conversion. And in this program, we have a variable A which is of type short int. And we have a variable B, which is of type float. Okay. So we know that short int will occupy uh, two bytes in memory. And float will occupy four bytes. So in this example, we also have an expression which says float C is equal to A plus B. So whenever the compiler will encounter expressions like this, that is whenever a compiler will encounter expressions that contains you know, multiple operands of different data types, then it will first make note of those operands with the smaller data types, and it will also make note of those operands with bigger data types. So once it makes note of operands of smaller data types and bigger data types, okay, before proceeding with the evaluation of that expression, it will first convert the operand of the smaller data type to the bigger data types and only then it will proceed further with the evaluation of that expression. It means in our example, okay, float C is equal to A plus B, the compiler will make note that A is of type short int and B is of type float. So it can easily understand that A is an operand of smaller data type compared to the operand B, which is of type float, right? Because short int occupies two bytes and float will occupy four bytes. Therefore, A is a operand of smaller data type and B is an operand of bigger data type. Therefore, before proceeding with the evaluation of this expression, the A will get converted into the data type of B. That is, this short int will get converted into floating point and only then this addition operation will get carried out, okay? So for example, this becomes C is equal to, okay, 5.0F plus 6.5F and only then the addition will get carried out, okay? So as you can see that the short int, that is A was initially containing five, which, get, which got converted into 5.0F. So as you can see that, the value of this operand A got automatically type converted into floating point, right? So this is the example of implicit type conversion that I was talking about, right? So now after getting converted, okay, so it gets evaluated and the answer becomes 11.5 followed by one, two, three, four, five zeros. Therefore, the value of 11.500000 will get stored into C, okay? So as a quick rep repetition, Okay, so whenever a compiler will encounter an expression that contains operands of different data types, then the operand of the smaller data type will get converted into the bigger type before the evaluation of that expression happens. Okay, and uh, one more thing to be noted is that whenever you are assigning the result of that variable and whenever you are actually using an assignment variable over here, the data type of the assignment variable must be equal or must be same as the uh, biggest data type in your expression. So in our case, the biggest data type of B is float and therefore the assignment variable C is also of type float. So now when I actually use printf to print the value of C, the output would be C is equal to 11.5 followed by five zeros. Okay, so this would be the output of this program. Okay, so this example demonstrate implicit type conversion where the short int is automatically getting converted into a floating point type, okay? And this is automatically done by the compiler, okay? Without our intervention. 
So having said that, let me show you one more example where the implicit type conversion happens. Okay. So I have two programs over here on the screen. So I'll call this as number one and I'll call this as number two. Okay. So as you can see that A is a variable of uh, type shorted in the first program and B is of type float. So what I'm doing here is that I'm trying to assign the value of A uh, which is of type short int to the variable b, which is of type float, right? So before assigning the value of a to b, so the compiler will automatically convert the value five into floating point, and only then that value would get you know stored into the variable b. Therefore, okay, what gets stored into b is five point okay five point zero f. Right? So it gets converted into floating point and then gets stored into B. Therefore, when I print the value of B, okay, what I get is five point followed by six zeros. Okay, so again here, before assigning the value of A to B, there is an implicit type conversion happening, which is automatically carried out by the compiler. Okay, so that is the reason even this is an example for uh, the demonstration of implicit type conversion. In some programming languages, the concept of converting a smaller data type into a bigger data type is called as widening a type. Okay. I'll call it as widening a type. Okay. And now as a second example, I'm doing the reverse of what I did in the first program. Okay. So as you can see here, okay, variable A is of type float and variable B is of type short integer. And I am trying to assign the value of a bigger data type into a smaller data type. Okay. Though this might not result in any kind of error, it might result in a warning because what happens here is that when I'm trying to assign the value of a bigger data type into a smaller data type, okay, so a type conversion happens, that is the floating point value gets converted into an integer and as a reason, okay, the decimal point or the decimal or the fractional value gets truncated and there is a loss of data over here, okay, and the 5 gets actually stored into the integer variable. Okay, so again here there is a type conversion happening. Okay, a type conversion from a floating point value to an integer uh, type. And again, that is the reason I showed you this as an example for implicit type conversion. Okay, and when I try to print the value of B over here, the result of B would be five. So, uh, and in some programming languages, we call this concept as narrowing. Okay, so narrowing a type. It means assigning a value of a bigger data type into a variable of a smaller data type is called as narrowing in few programming languages. And as much as possible, you must be very careful while dealing with such kind of uh, 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 type conversions, which involves narrowing because you may end up losing a part of the data. Okay. So these are few examples of implicit type conversion. And there is one more example, which I feel is very important for you to understand as part of, you know, implicit type conversion. And that is to do with signed and unsigned. Okay. So we know that signed integer uh, variables can have both positive and negative values and unsigned variables can only have positive values. Okay. So as you can see on the screen over here in this example, I'm trying to assign a signed value of minus one into an unsigned variable B. So what happens here is that again, a type conversion happens from signed to unsigned automatically, which is done by the compiler. Okay. No? And therefore, okay. So minus one, when gets stored into a unsigned gets converted into a positive value. And that would be a very big positive number. Okay, because we are using shortened and to represent minus one, it might, uh, it will take 16 bits. So minus one would be represented as one. Okay. So one, 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 one. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is nothing but minus 1, okay, in two's complement method, okay, using 16 bit. And when I convert this into an unsigned number, that is when I convert this into a decimal number, it becomes 65,535. Okay. So therefore, what gets stored in B is 65,535 as a positive number. So when I try to print the value of B on the screen, the answer I get is 65,535. Okay. So again, this is an example for automatic type conversion where the compiler okay, converts the signed value into an unsigned before assigning the value of A into B. Okay. So as a quick recap, okay. So in the first example, Okay, so the compiler will automatically convert the data type of A into floating point value before carrying out this evaluation of this expression. So this is the demonstration of implicit type conversion. And in the second example, while assigning the value of uh, uh, A into B, that is while assigning an integer value to floating point, first the uh, integer value gets converted into floating point automatically by the compiler before storing it to the variable B. So this is the second example for implicit type conversion. And as a third example, when I'm assigning a value of floating point value into a short integer variable. So the floating point value will get converted into a short integer before assigning the value into B. Okay. So this is the third example.
okay and as a fourth example of uh, implicit type conversion when i'm assigning a signed value into an unsigned value so the signed value will get automatically converted into an unsigned value by the compiler and only then the value of okay so 65535 gets stored into b okay so these are the examples for uh, implicit type conversion and as a generic rule okay as a generic rule okay in an expression okay whenever you have an expression and if you get confused as to uh, what operand gets converted to what data type right in that case you have to make use of this you know rule that i have given over here okay in an expression if either operand is of type long double then convert the other to long double otherwise if either operand is double convert the other to double otherwise if either operand is float convert the other to float otherwise convert char and char to int then if either operand is long convert the other to the law okay so it might initially seem confusing to you and there is a reason i've given you a very important note read the above statements at least three to four times with deep thinking to understand trust me once you read this for three to four times with a you know deep thinking you will understand how to evaluate any expressions which contains operands of multiple data types okay so whenever you encounter any kind of expressions with you know uh, operands of different data types please use this rule and you will starting from the first start you know this as a step 1 step 2 step 3 okay when you use it in a step wise manner you will know how to evaluate those expressions okay so this is all about uh, implicit type conversions okay now let me show you how to do explicit type conversion okay so explicit type conversion uh, is also sometimes called as type casting which is done using a casting operator so here the compiler is not doing the conversion for us rather okay the programmer is asking the compiler to forcibly convert an element or a data of one type to other type okay as an example over here as you can see here okay so using the casting operator so casting operator will take this form okay open the bracket type close the bracket okay so this is called as a casting operator where type indicates as to to what type the compiler has to convert the data to okay so in my case in this example i am asking the compiler to convert the floating point value 2.5 to an integer value before storing that into the variable a okay no so i am forcing the float to now become an integer therefore what gets stored into the variable a is nothing but 2 so when i print the value of a it gives me a is equal to 2 therefore the float value got you know explicitly converted into an integer value before storing into the variable a okay so this is one example as an as another example okay so i am converting the you know integer type into a char type so that i can print the data in the character format okay we know that 65 is the ascii value for a and now instead of printing it in the you know decimal format i'm just converting that into a character format using the type casting operator so i'm saying the compiler that convert this uh, integer type 65 to a char type explicitly before printing therefore the output would be the character for ascii 65 is and i would get an a in place of percentage c format specifier okay so this is all about in this lesson okay so hope you understood about how type you know type conversion works both implicit and explicit type conversion and especially i want you to keep this rule in mind i want you to read it two to three times so that you'll understand type conversions better okay so this is the core you know you can consider this as a core formula for uh, understanding type conversions in c language okay so having said that in upcoming lessons i'm going to give you some standard practices that you need to follow while writing c programs okay and uh, having said that hope you enjoyed this lesson if you enjoyed this lesson and if you really learned something new then don't forget to like this video also don't forget to you know subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming updates in this programming series okay so having said that meet you in the next lesson until then take care bye bye love you all so much